Welcome everyone, Dr. Thor here, and we're going to look at a super classic Hieronymus machine. These are very rare. This is an original classic from what I think is the early 50s. It could be actually from the 40s. Um, and we're going to show you this. So this is extremely rare. I mean, you're, this is a uh, one of his uh, first uh, models, which was made with tube amplifiers. Now, Hieronymus is known for his um, two-dial, or they're called two-bank units. And they have these huge kind of dials on them, which is nice because you can see, you know, a lot of problems with radionic units is dialing them because it's hard to see the dial, especially if they're 0 to 100. Here's one of the output wells. Here's the input well. Here's the modality, which is direct rate or sweeping energies. And you can see it says right on here, two burned out November 22nd, 1957. Of course, I do have all the tubes uh, to fix this with, but um, it just shows you how old this is. So this is over 60 years old. I would say this is probably closer to 70 years of the actual manufacturer. But at the very least, it's over 60 years old. You can see how it says Hieronymus Radiation Research Laboratory. Now, he liked the term radiation. And, of course, here's actually even a timer. And you'll see how it says right here. The Loptic Transmitter Model Number DRS2, Instrument Number 3, Patent Applied for, 110-120AC, 25 watts. And of course, we can go here and uh, here's the lights. And you turn it on. Here's interesting, as I said, we've seen this on several units, and here's a ground most radionic units used to be grounded because they kind of work particularly for tuning or grabbing a rate or analyzing, uh, like radios, which need to be grounded. You are dealing with these kind of signals. Um, and while radionics tends not to be radio-based, it does tend to be a biofrequency. So here's the neutralizer, there's the power switch. And, of course, it has a conventional antenna on it. You can see here's where the antenna connected there. And then it goes, let me see if we can get this down and get a little better picture of it. So you're talking about, yeah, this is a very conventional antenna. There's nothing much to it. But this is a very rare, very, very, very rare machine here. You don't see hardly anything originally out there. And of course, as I said, this is one of their first models. They went into uh, using more, quote, solid state as they became available. And that's the problem with most radionics is that things change depending on the availability of what's there. So the bottom line is, is that, you know, if you're using tubes, well, what are you going to use? You're going to make up solid state? Well, no. So this is one of the problems with figuring out, well, what's the best thing to use um, to make radionic machines. So they, they weren't picking tubes because they wanted to. Now, we can today, and as I've always stated, the resonance of tubes is very important uh, because we're dealing with this strange uh, bioenergy that is uh, difficult to detect. Now, it can be detected, and you could make meters and everything else, but, and you see it says eloptic transmitter because he called this energy eloptic energy, which is quite interesting. Again, that's his theories and what he went into. Um, he lived to be quite an old age. I believe he lived almost to 90. Um, so uh, certainly he himself lived for a long period of time. And uh, apparently his technology, it's always been thought of as one of the best in this area uh, that is proven. A Peter Kelly took over who worked with him and produces um, modern units. These are still available today. Peter Kelly has died, but uh, his family has taken over, making his uh, kind of two-bank units, has complete courses, etc. Um, 
So you can always usually tell old units because you can see that this actually has a leather handle. The case has those typical, as I've shown before with his other unit, <coughs> has leather um, end bumpers here, whatever you call them. And there's the electrical plug.